Okay, well, we're having a little heat wave, so I had to kind of build this. So let me show you what I'm doing. This is just so I could work in the shade, doing the body work. So uh, right now, I'm working on the door and I filled in the old handle hole with some fiberglass, but we're doing some body work, trying to make this look really nice where we had to uh, get this piece in. And uh, this is where there was a hasp that used to hold the door from falling because the door had dropped like three inches and there was a hasp that was holding this door from falling off basically when I bought the trailer. So we put some screw holes in here, which I got a patch because we had to screw the door where we wanted it and then put the new hinges in place because everything was so crooked. And then a bunch of body work here and here. The whole lower half, we're doing body work today. I'm gonna be just doing all the body work because like I said, it's getting painted this Saturday. The bottom half's getting painted. So that whole piece was broke off and now it's all new fiberglass. Same, same there, that was all broken off. And a lot of this was broken pretty bad. That wasn't, we got lucky. And uh, we used to have a bolt coming through here for the spare tire, but now I'm just gonna, I'm welding a little holder, you know, like a little thing on my bumper. I'm putting a custom bumper off of a 1970 Chevy van. And then off behind that, I'm gonna have a spare tire mount for my little spare. And all the body work down here was already done where the fridge used to be and all that. So we're getting closer. So today I'm using an air file. I just bought it. I've been wanting one for a while. So anyways, it's peel and stick. You put your, well, actually it's not. See, you could buy sandpaper designed to fit inside there, but I use peel and stick because I buy it by the roll. Yeah, I think it's cheaper by the roll. And it's pneumatic, so when I give it air, it's just gonna sand, because we have a lot of that stuff to do. And uh, we wanna use something like that, because we can kind of contour it. The other thing is when we're sanding that, we want to stay with the contour, and we wanna go like in a cross hatch so that it's sanded evenly. You don't want to just do it by hand with your with a, your bare hand. Okay, so I'm going to fill all these fiberglass holes. See, they go all the way through to the, to the inside. So here's what we're going to do. There's another one, another one. So what I'm going to do, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put some tape on the back because we don't want any of our materials that we're using to come through. So we need a backing for them. Then we're going to fill them. Well, after we grind, we're going to grind a little. You want to grind like a little um, contour so that you have a place to put your material. In this case, we're going to use reinforced fiberglass. Um, it's kind of like a little thick, it's, it's called kitty hair, and it's just fiberglass reinforced body filler. Uh, we're going to put some in there and all of the holes. So I'm grinding all the way down to the gel coat, trying to get beyond the spider cracking so you can feel it. You want to get down through the crack. Well, one thing you always want to do when you're sanding, whenever you're using any kind of abrasives around um, polished surfaces like this, you always want to protect them. So I put some tape because there's a lip and I put the tape all the way around because when I'm sanding, I don't want to accidentally hit it because if you get a scratch, that's it. You know, it's going to be hard to get that out. You probably won't be able to. That's a little chrome finish. I think it's stainless. 
But um, anyways, it's just a little thing you might want to do. Always protect your edges. Okay, so now all of these have a little ground indent. It goes in like a little pool so that the fiberglass resin and resin have a place to go. So they're all ground all the way down at the very bottom. Right there. So there's two there. Okay, I put a very thin coat of a lightweight filler across here so we can get it all feathered in real nice. And then I had to put a guide coat on here. That's what the black is. So when I sand that with my air sander right here, then uh, it'll show me where the low spots are. So I can uh, just go ahead and fill those in. And I sanded all the fiberglass that we filled in these holes. So those have been filled in here. I just have to sand this one. And then we can move on to the lightweight body filler for that. The glazing putty for these uh, low spots. They're very minor. You can barely feel them. So I'm kind of wrapping up. So wherever you see primer, that's where the bodywork has been completely finished. Wherever you see glazing putty, that's like a light green. That's the last step. After sanding, it gets primed. I'm just working my way around. I still have a lot to do on the top, but we're concentrating only on the bottom right now because the bottom is gonna get painted Saturday. So this is all ready to go. That's all ready to go. I had to put the glazing putty on this whole side because you could feel imperfections. We still got a little sanding to do here. This is all done. That's where the tail light, the side light goes. Back here, it's um, I, I was doing some guide guide coats and stuff, and right now that's all ready to go. Those all those holes you see right there, they're just for the tail lights. So this bottom part's done, that's all done. And we still gotta see on this, that's done. The, 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 we're only doing half the door, we're only concentrating on half the door. And that's almost done, I just got a little bit here, a little bit there, and the marker lights go here. Again, all this has been done. So tomorrow I'm going to down, go down to my body shop and I'm gonna get some more primer and a bunch more supplies. We're out of supplies. And then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna do a little more block sanding and then we're gonna prime the whole bottom half of this tomorrow. Okay, well, I'm almost done with the body work. I just need to do a little sanding right here. And we're just concentrating on the bottom half. The top has a ton of body work to do. But uh, the bottom, the, again, tail light goes there. The bottom half gets painted in a couple days. So I just want to do a walk around. Then I'm going to sand the whole thing down really, really smooth. Because if your surface, if your surface is rough and, and, and it feels really, really rough, and then you prime over that, it's gonna transfer onto the primer. Now the primer surface is gonna feel rough. I am using a high build primer. So um, what that means is any little imperfections, like little pinholes, they'll, they'll get filled in. So 
that's about that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start sanding that down. And I'm gonna continue sanding the whole thing down. What I'm doing is I'm just sanding it down like in a cross hatch pattern with an, uh, a pneumatic sander with 220 grit. You can go as harsh as 150 grit, I was told, and still um, get away with the, uh, the thick primer. It'll cover those scratches, but you know, I, I'd rather just sand it with 220 and then go ahead and prime it. And then I'm gonna sand the primer down with 400 before we put our top coat on our color. Okay, well, we're getting down to crunch time, and then I just found these guys. So, um, right here too. I didn't see those. I don't know how I missed that. So we're gonna go ahead and fill those. These I'm not worried about because I'm gonna put the three quarter inch trim around here, but these are a little bit high right there. They're, they're pretty big. So we're gonna go ahead and fill those real quick. Okay, I'm gonna mix up a little bit of the V glaze. It's a glazing putty. Squeezing a little out, there we go. These are really nice if you haven't seen these as a little hole, like for a palette. And you mix up your, whatever you're uh, using, kitty hair, Bondo, uh, glazing putty, whatever. You put it on this little sheet when you're done, you just tear this little sheet off, throw it away. You don't have to look for cardboard or anything anymore. Okay, little bead, I usually just go right across with it. All right, I'm just doing one last walk around before I cover my wheels and start priming the bottom half. We've got all our body work done. We're just gonna paint half the door. And there she is. So we're, again, we're gonna use the Evercoat Feather Fill G2 Polyester High Build Primer. And uh, that's catalyzed and you mix it 100 to one with the hardener and uh, Okay, well, there it is. I'm going to go mix up some paint. All right, well, we got the lower half painted. There it is. That's all primed and I'm gonna let it just, you know, dry overnight really nice and let it harden.